Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Sony Alpha 65. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with, and not a replacement of, your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. The functions and features of the A65 that we cover are designed to give you a solid working knowledge of your camera. Our goal is to not only explain how to adjust the settings on your camera, but also help you understand when and why you would be motivated to take creative control of your camera. It's really not possible to cover every configuration on your camera, but we will provide you a very solid foundation to build your digital photography skills on. With this new information, you'll be able to improve your ability to capture great pictures in a variety of shooting settings. The A65 features Sony's impressive translucent mirror technology with full-time phase detection autofocus, a 24.3 megapixel image sensor, a 15-point autofocus system, creative controls and effects, smile, shutter, and face detection options, adjustable D-range optimizer, and many other great features and functions that we'll discuss later in this guide. Let's get started. Your A65 has many sophisticated buttons and dials, and to take the best pictures with your camera, you want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin with a brief overview of many of the camera's buttons and features. Many of the things we'll discuss in this chapter are discussed in greater detail later in this guide. First, there is the shutter release button and the power switch. To take a picture, simply rotate the switch to the on position, press and hold the shutter button halfway down for a moment, allow the camera to focus, and press it the rest of the way down to take the picture. This is the control dial. In many of the camera shooting modes, you can make adjustments to shooting settings with the control dial. This is the exposure compensation button. In the camera's programmed auto, aperture priority, and shutter priority modes, you can press and hold this button while rotating the control dial to adjust the overall brightness of the image. If you place the exposure compensation cursor at the plus side of the scale, the image will be brighter. And if you place the cursor toward the minus side, the image will be darker. After you've taken the photo, you'll want to be sure to set the exposure compensation back to zero. This is the ISO button, which provides fast and easy access to the camera's ISO settings. Here is the Finder LCD button. By default, your camera will always be in the live view screen mode, meaning the scene will be displayed on the LCD. To switch the screen mode from the LCD to the electronic viewfinder, you can press the Finder LCD button. Also note that when these IP sensors are covered, like when the camera is brought close to the face, the view will be automatically switched from the LCD to the electronic viewfinder. This is the movie recording button. To record a movie, simply press the button. To end recording, simply press the button again. This button has three functions. First, it is the zoom out thumbnail button in playback mode. It is also the auto exposure lock button. You can use this button when you're taking pictures into the sun or near a window to ensure that the subject will not be too dark or too bright. Finally, this button serves as the aperture value button in the manual shooting mode. Pressing and holding this button while rotating the control dial will change the aperture setting. This button also has three functions. First, it is the zoom in button in the playback mode. Next, it is the smart teleconverter button. Pressing this button will allow you to digitally zoom in without the use of the zoom ring on the lens. Pressing the button once will zoom the image 1.4 times, and pressing it again will zoom the image two times. Finally, this button can serve as a focus magnifier, so you can check focus before taking the picture. To use this feature, it must first be enabled in the camera's menu system. Press the menu button and scroll to the third custom menu. Navigate to the Smart Teleconverter button option and use the AF button to select it. Here you can change the function from Smart Teleconverter to Focus Magnifier. Now press the shutter button halfway down to exit the menu system and to focus. Here you can press the Focus Magnifier button once or multiple times to zoom in to check focus on the image prior to shooting. While you're viewing the zoomed image, you can use the top, bottom, and sides of the control button to scroll to different parts of the image. On this side of the camera, we'll find the menu button, which is used to access the camera's sophisticated menu system and the mode dial. 
By rotating the mode dial, you can tell the camera what exposure settings to use. When you choose any of the modes in this section of the dial, the camera will do all the work for you, and all you need to do is point and shoot. These modes include the Auto Plus, Auto, Flash Off, Scene, Sweep Panorama, 3D Sweep Panorama, and Continuous Advanced Priority. This section of the mode dial has the manual modes. When you use the manual modes, you'll choose many of the camera's settings. These modes are more advanced, but with a little practice can produce amazing results. These modes include Programmed Auto, Aperture Priority, Shutter Priority, and Manual. There is also a movie mode on the A65's mode dial. When the camera is used in this mode, you will be able to record movies with adjusted exposure settings. Next, we'll find the flash button. Pressing this button will make the camera's built-in flash pop up in the manual modes. The flash will pop up and fire automatically in many of the camera's automatic and scene modes. Just above the camera's flash, you'll see the accessory shoe, which you can use to attach optional flash units and other accessories to the camera. Also on this side of the camera, there are the focus mode switches on the lens and camera body. Both of these switches must be set to the AF position for the camera to use autofocus. One of the biggest benefits of owning a digital SLR camera is the ability to use a variety of different lenses. To mount or install a lens, make sure that the camera is switched to off. Hold the camera with one hand and the lens with the other like this, and align the lenses index with the index on the camera. Then turn the lens gently until it couples. When you want to dismount the lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand. Then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. When you need to clean your lens, it's a good idea to use a lens cloth. Other fabrics can dull or scratch your lens. Avoid changing lenses in windy or dusty conditions. This will help the image sensor stay clean and free of dust. On this side of the camera, you'll also find four terminal covers, which will allow you to connect your camera to other devices. Here, you can connect a remote control, and this terminal will allow you to use an external microphone for movie recording. The DC in terminal will allow you to use an external power source for the camera, and the HDMI USB terminals will allow you to connect the camera to other devices using HDMI or USB cables. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the camera where we'll find the tripod socket as well as the battery compartment. On this side of the camera, there is the memory card slot cover. Your Sony A65 can use SD memory cards as well as Memory Stick Pro Duo memory cards. When you're inserting an SD memory card, you'll want to make sure that the manufacturer's logo is facing the back of the camera. For Memory Stick Pro Duo cards, the manufacturer's logo will face the front of the camera. Simply insert the card until it clicks into place and close the card slot cover. Do not force the card. If the card does not click into place easily, check to see that it is positioned correctly. Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. Also keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically reformat your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you don't format your card unless you have already copied the images that you want to save on your computer. Formatting your card will erase all of the images. To format your memory card, press the menu button. Then use the control button to scroll to the memory card tool menu. The first menu item is format. Press the center control button, also the AF button to select it. The camera will prompt you with a warning. Select enter and the memory card will be formatted. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most prominent feature is the fully articulated three inch LCD screen. When rotating or tilting the LCD monitor, note that it will pivot, tilt and rotate in specific directions and forcing the monitor in a direction other than intended may cause damage. This screen serves several purposes. First, it provides you with a full-time live view of the scene. Next, it displays the images that have been taken in the playback mode. Using the camera's control buttons, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. The LCD also provides fast and easy access to the camera's menu system and all of the shooting settings. Directly above the LCD is the electronic viewfinder, which also allows you to frame your images. Before you start taking pictures, you'll want to focus the electronic viewfinder. 
To do this, use the diopter adjustment dial located to the right of the eye cup. Rotate the dial until the automatic focus points in the viewfinder are in sharp focus. At the bottom of the viewfinder display, you can see the shutter speed, aperture, the exposure compensation, and the ISO setting. You'll also see the focus confirmation light appear when an image is in sharp focus. Over the scene, you will see the camera's focus points. When the shutter is pressed halfway to focus, the areas where the focus points turn green will be in focus. This is the function button. When this button is pressed in any of the shooting modes, quick access is given to many important shooting settings and functions. These are the control buttons, which are used to navigate to different settings and options on the LCD. Each section also has its own function. The top of the control button is used to control which information is displayed on the LCD and in the viewfinder. Each time it's pressed, a different set of information will appear on the LCD and in the electronic viewfinder. The left side of the control button is used to set the drive mode. The drive modes determine how many times the shutter releases when you press the shutter button. The A65 has single shot advance, continuous high and low speed, a 10 second and 2 second self timer, and bracketing options that are available in the camera's P, A, S, and M shooting modes. The single and continuous drive modes are set automatically in the automatic and scene modes. You have full control of the drive modes in the P, A, S, and M modes. In single shooting mode, one picture will be taken when you press the shutter button completely. The continuous shooting mode has both high and low speed options. When the continuous mode is selected, the camera will continuously shoot up to 10 frames per second. The next drive mode options are the 10 second and 2 second self timer options. The self timer options are great for when you'd like to include yourself in the photo or reduce camera shake at very low shutter speeds. The bottom of the control button provides access to the camera's picture effects. There are a variety of different picture effects that will allow you to be even more creative with your images. We'll discuss these effects in greater detail later in this guide. The right side of the control button provides access to the camera's white balance settings. Note that these settings are not available in certain shooting modes. The center control button has two purposes. First, it serves as the enter button to confirm selections in the menu system and to other shooting settings. Second, it is the AF button and the object tracking button which allows you to continuously focus on a moving subject. This is the playback button, which allows you to view the images and movies that have been recorded on the camera's memory card. This is the in-camera guide button, which will display shooting tips for the selected shooting mode. It also serves as the delete button to delete images and movies from the memory card. Let's take a look at the information and settings that can be accessed on the LCD screen when you're taking pictures. Note that the options will vary depending on the shooting mode that is selected, and we'll be showing the options that are available in the program auto mode. Many of these settings will be discussed in more detail later in the guide. To enter the recording information screen, simply press the function button. The first setting is drive mode. To change this setting, you can simply rotate the control dial. To see the options for a setting, press the center control or AF button. You can use the top, bottom, and sides of the control button to navigate through the options. Press the center control button to select an option. To re-enter the function settings, we'll press the function button again. Next, we'll find the flash mode options. These are the autofocus mode and the autofocus area settings. This is the object tracking feature. When enabled, object tracking will keep the focus on a moving subject. The next two options are face detection and smile shutter. Let's discuss these settings now. When activated, the face detection option will automatically find and focus on faces in the scene. A new feature of the A65 is face registration, which allows you to register a specific face for the camera to focus on when face detection is used. The next setting, smile shutter, can detect a smiling face and take a picture, all without you even pressing the shutter button. To use Smile Shutter, simply select On and use the sides of the control button to select the level of smile you'd like. Then press the center control button to confirm and exit the screen. To view the options for the settings on the right side of the screen, press the right side of the control button. The first option is the ISO setting, followed by the metering mode and flash compensation. Next is the white balance setting, DRO Auto HDR, Creative Style, 
and picture effect. Your Sony A65 can record image files in two different file types, RAW and JPEG. Both file types have benefits and drawbacks to consider. Let's talk a little bit about these two image file types. There are several important things to know about RAW files. First, they are not actually image files. They are actually the RAW data saved to the memory card directly from the image sensor. Next, RAW files are uncompressed, meaning that the file sizes are considerably larger than those of compressed files. RAW files have a much broader range of tones. Shadow and highlight areas have more detail than JPEG files. Also, you can make extensive edits to a RAW file without losing data or image quality. And finally, RAW files appear flatter with less color and contrast and must be processed on the computer before they're printed. JPEG files, however, are very different from RAW files. JPEG files are a standard image file format that can be read by any image software. They are compressed, which means that not all of the image data is actually saved. Because they're compressed, JPEGs are much smaller in file size. JPEGs have a more narrow range of shadows and highlights and will lose some image data each time they're edited. Finally, JPEG files are processed by your camera and are able to be printed directly from the memory card. Because JPEG images require less time when editing on the computer, I usually use a high quality JPEG setting for everyday picture taking and snapshots. If I know ahead of time that I'm going to be extensively editing my images, I'll choose a RAW plus JPEG format. Let's take a look now at how to choose the image size and quality settings on the A65. First, we'll press the menu button and make sure that we're in the first recording menu indicated by a camera icon with the number one highlighted. The top option, image size, is where you can choose the number of megapixels you'd like the camera to use when recording images. The first option, large, will use all 24 megapixels. The second option, medium, will use 12 megapixels. And the last option, small, will record the images using six megapixels. Unless I know that I will only be using the images for email or posting online, I like to keep the camera set to the large 24 megapixel setting. Let's also take a look at the image quality options. There are four different options. First, there is RAW. With this setting, the camera will record the RAW file. The next option, RAW and JPEG, will record a RAW image file in addition to a JPEG file. There are also two JPEG options, fine and standard. The difference between the two JPEG options is the level of compression. The fine option will have the least amount of compression and produce a higher quality image. The standard option will have more compression, slightly lower quality, and smaller file sizes. Now that we've discussed image quality and file types, let's talk a little about how to archive and back up these files for future use and safekeeping. It's important to always have your files saved in at least two different locations. There are many ways you can back up your files, and we'll discuss a few of them here, including CDs and DVDs, external and redundant hard drive systems, and online backup services. Regardless of which methods of backup you choose, you'll want to have a regular system for backing up your files. It's a good idea to create backups at the same time as you download the files from the camera's memory card for post-processing. Remember to create backups in two different locations, in addition to your regular working hard drive. You'll also want to create backups of your processed images at set times each day, week, or month, depending on how frequently you're updating or adding files to your computer. The most affordable way to create a backup of your files is to burn them to CDs or DVDs. It's always a good idea to make multiple copies of each CD or DVD, as well as have at least one additional backup method. There are a few things to know about using CDs and DVDs to archive your images. Although the topic is debatable, our research found that many low-quality writable CDs or DVDs have an average lifespan of about 15 years when properly stored and cared for. If you choose to use these discs, you'll want to make sure that you not only have multiple backups of each disc, but you'll also want to periodically check the discs for signs of deterioration or discoloration. There are several companies that use gold and silver in the manufacture of their discs to ensure the archival quality. These discs are more costly than their lower quality counterparts, but they will normally have a lifespan of anywhere from 100 to 300 years. 
Be sure to look for the manufacturer's guarantee when shopping for silver or gold CDs or DVDs. Although these discs are more archival, you'll still want to make sure that you have multiple copies of each disc. Regardless of which type of CD or DVD you choose to back up your image files, you'll want to follow a few simple rules to help your discs last as long as possible. First, always check the disc to verify that the contents have been successfully recorded before placing it in storage. Always handle the discs with care, using only the outer edges or the center hole. Also, use only non-solvent permanent marker on the disc and only write on the inner hub area. Finally, you'll also want to make sure that the discs are stored upright in jewel cases or paper sleeves in a cool, dry place. In addition to having a CD or DVD backup of your files, it's also a good idea to save the files using another method. External hard drives have become increasingly affordable and are available in a variety of capacities. When you use an external hard drive for backup purposes, you'll want to use a different hard drive for everyday working use to preserve the integrity of the backup drive. Another option for backing up your image files is a redundant hard drive or RAID system. These systems vary in size, speed, and cost, but can be an effective backup method. Let's discuss how these systems work. Inside this box, there are four hard drives. Some systems have two hard drives, others have four or more. Each of the hard drives can hold the exact same data. This way, when one of the drives fails, the other drive will still have all the data, and the bad drive can easily be replaced and repopulated with the data from the good drive. The system is connected to a computer using a standard USB cable or through a network. Some of these systems are very user-friendly and easy to install. Others may require the assistance of your local computer service technician. Again, it's a good idea to have your files saved using at least one additional method. One other way to keep a backup of your files is through an online backup service. These services vary not only in cost, but in the way the backups are managed. Most of these services will require that you install a piece of software on your computer. At a set time each day, week, or month, the software will back up the files via the internet to a remote server. One of the advantages of using an online backup service is that in case of a fire or other natural disaster, your files will be safe at an off-site location. Many photographers keep external hard drives, CDs, or DVDs in addition to using an online backup service. Your camera features a variety of shooting modes, ranging from fully automatic to completely manual. This gives you a lot of flexibility and creative control over your photos. You can adjust the exposure, shutter speed, and depth of field settings on your camera to help capture the pictures you want. As you become more familiar with these concepts and principles, you improve your ability to capture the best pictures possible. Let's discuss the camera's automatic, flash off, scene, sweep, and continuous advanced priority modes now. With each of these modes, the camera will adjust all of the settings for you, and all you need to do is point and shoot. There are two automatic modes on the A65, Auto and Auto Plus. With both of these modes, the camera will make adjustments for the brightness and color of the photo automatically. The Auto Plus mode is different from the Auto mode because it will quickly assess a scene and then switch to an appropriate scene mode to take the picture. The flash off mode functions in the same way as the automatic modes, except that the flash will not fire regardless of the lighting conditions. Use this mode in places where a flash is not appropriate. Now let's discuss the camera's scene modes. To access the scene modes, rotate the mode dial to the scene mode setting. Now press the function button to view. The first option allows you to select the scene mode. Press the center control button to view the options and use the up and down buttons to make your selection. There is a scene mode available for almost any shooting scenario, including portrait, sports action, macro, landscape, sunset, night scene, handheld twilight, and night portrait. When you recognize one of these environments, simply choose from the scene selection menu and the camera will optimize the necessary settings. Let's talk a little about each of these modes. First, there is the portrait mode. This will help you emphasize the subject by blurring the background. It also reproduces soft skin tones. Make sure you focus on the subject's eyes for the best results. 
Next is the Sports Action Mode. This shoots fast motion at high shutter speeds. If you hold down the shutter button, the camera will continue taking pictures one after another until you release the button. This mode works best with well-lit scenes as insufficient light will not allow high shutter speeds. The next mode is the macro mode. This is great for close-ups of small subjects that are physically close to the lens. Use this to capture subjects such as flowers and food in clear sharp focus. When shooting at distances of less than 9 inches, using a macro lens may be necessary. The landscape mode captures the entire range of scenery in sharp focus with vivid color. Shooting with your lens set to wide angle will increase the sense of vastness of the scenery. You'll also want to make sure to keep the camera level when you're shooting landscape images. The sunset mode allows you to vividly and dramatically capture the warm colors of dusk and dawn. This mode is also great for capturing silhouettes. Shutter speeds may be slow in this mode, so you might consider using a tripod. The night scene mode is great for capturing nighttime scenes without losing the dark atmosphere. In this mode, the shutter speed may be slow, and the use of a tripod will help avoid blur due to camera shake. You'll also want to make sure the camera is level when you're photographing landscapes or similar scenes. The next mode is the handheld twilight mode. With this mode, you can take pictures at night without using a tripod and still get impressive results. Use this mode for stationary subjects or scenes. The handheld twilight mode takes a burst of shots and then combines the shots to create one image with reduced blur, camera shake, and noise. Keep the camera as still as possible during the continuous shooting. Please note that after the shots are taken, there will be a delay while the camera processes and combines the images. The last scene mode, the night portrait mode, is great for capturing images of people in nighttime scenes. In this mode, the flash will fire to expose the subject, and the shutter will remain open for a longer period of time to properly expose the background. Now that we've talked about the camera's scene modes, let's discuss how to use the sweep panorama shooting modes. First, simply rotate the mode dial to the sweep panorama icon. Now the camera will prompt you to take the shot. So hold the camera steady, press the shutter button halfway down to set focus and exposure, and then the rest of the way down to take the picture. As you slowly move the camera in the direction of the arrow, you'll notice that the camera will take multiple shots at very high speed. In this mode, it's important to make sure that you follow the direction of the arrow and move the camera at a smooth, consistent speed. Otherwise, the camera will be unable to shoot the panorama and will prompt you with an error message. The camera will seamlessly stitch all of the images together to create a single panoramic image. Note that it will take the camera a few moments to process the image. In addition to the sweep panorama setting, the A65 also has a 3D sweep panorama setting. Images shot in this setting can be viewed on a compatible 3D television. Taking pictures in this mode is the same as taking pictures in the standard sweep panorama mode. There are a few more things we should discuss about the sweep shooting modes, the panorama image size and the panorama direction. These settings are customizable for both the sweep panorama and the 3D sweep panorama modes. To make adjustments to these settings, make sure that the mode dial is set to either the sweep panorama or 3D sweep panorama mode, and then press the menu button. Here, make sure that you're on the first recording menu. Use the control button to navigate to the panorama size option. You can select standard or wide. If you're using the 3D panorama setting, you will also have the 16-9 option. The next menu item is the panorama direction. This is the setting that controls the direction of the arrow when shooting in panorama mode. You can choose from right, left, up, or down. In 3D panorama, you'll only have left and right options. Now let's take a minute to talk about the A65's continuous advanced priority mode. With this mode, you'll have the ability to capture very fast-moving subjects with amazingly crisp focus. The continuous advanced priority mode can capture images up to 10 frames per second. To operate the camera in this mode, rotate the mode dial to the continuous advanced priority icon. Now, all you need to do is press the shutter halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. The camera will continue to take pictures as long as the shutter button is held down. 
To make sure that the focus will be adjusted during shooting, you'll want to make sure the focus mode is set to continuous. To do this, simply press the function button and navigate to the auto focus mode. Rotate the control dial to select continuous AF. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor or film. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in shadow, mid-tone, and highlight areas. Photos that are too bright are overexposed, and photos that are too dark are said to be underexposed. There are three ways that your A65 measures light. These are the camera's metering modes. Note that the metering modes are available only in certain shooting modes. To access the camera's metering modes, make sure the mode dial is set to PASM, Continuous Advanced, or Sweep Panorama. Note that you can also set the metering mode in the camera's movie mode. Now, we'll simply press the function button and use the control button to navigate to the metering mode option. The first metering mode is called multi-segment metering. This is an all-around metering mode suited for portraits and even backlit subjects. The camera sets the exposure automatically to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations, but sometimes when the scene is very bright or very dark, you'll want to use a different metering mode. The center weighted metering mode is weighted at the center and then averaged for the entire scene. The last mode is spot metering. This mode is effective when the background is much brighter than the subject due to backlighting. Spot metering covers only the area in the spot metering circle at the center of the frame. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, let's talk a little about the shooting modes on the A65. Your camera features a variety of shooting modes, ranging from fully automatic to completely manual. This gives you a lot of flexibility and creative control over your photos. You can adjust the exposure, shutter speed, and depth of field settings on your camera to help capture the pictures you want. As you become more familiar with these concepts and principles, you'll improve your ability to capture the best pictures possible. Now that we've talked about the camera's basic shooting modes, let's discuss the more advanced shooting modes. Note that we'll learn about these modes, but we won't spend very much time discussing basic photography concepts. If you'd like to learn more about how to use the camera's advanced modes to take amazing photos, you may benefit from QuickPro's Fundamentals series, which covers important elements of photography, including exposure, basic lighting, and composition. These modes allow you to take the most creative control over the camera's settings, like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, flash, as well as a variety of other settings. The first mode we'll discuss is called Program Auto, and it's represented with a P on the mode dial. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure. This may seem similar to the auto modes, but with the program auto mode, you have control over the camera's aperture, shutter speed, focus mode, drive mode, and built-in flash settings. To operate in this mode, rotate the mode dial to P. You can monitor exposure settings like the aperture and shutter speed at the bottom of the LCD or the viewfinder. Taking a picture in this mode is easy. Simply hold the shutter halfway down to focus, then press the shutter all of the way down to take the picture. You may find that the image is too bright or too dark for your liking. To adjust the exposure compensation, press and hold the exposure compensation button while rotating the control dial. Values with a minus sign will make the image darker and values with a plus sign will make the image brighter. The next setting on the mode dial is the A or aperture priority mode. The aperture priority mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in the scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in an image is in focus, it is said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. Select this mode when you want to create a long or short depth of field. To use this mode, set the mode dial to A and rotate the control dial to select an aperture value as you watch the display on the LCD or in the viewfinder. 
Once you have made your selection, press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. The next setting on the mode dial is the S or shutter priority mode. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in a scene, whether it is freezing action or blurring a moving subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select an appropriate aperture value for proper exposure. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, set the mode dial to S and rotate the control dial to set the shutter speed. The Sony a65 has shutter speeds that range from very slow, 30 full seconds, to very fast, 1 4,000th of a second. You can view the shutter speed and aperture values on the LCD or viewfinder. The next advanced shooting mode is manual or M mode. This mode gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. To operate the camera in manual mode, rotate the mode dial to M. To set the shutter speed, rotate the control dial. To set the aperture, press and hold the aperture button, also the auto exposure lock button, while rotating the control dial. As you're making adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed, watch the exposure scale through the viewfinder. When the exposure level indicator is near the center of the scale, the image will be properly exposed. To monitor the exposure on the LCD, you'll want to watch the small MM icon. The number to the left of that icon indicates how close your settings are to proper exposure. Proper exposure is indicated by a plus minus zero value. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed so that the exposure level indicator is near the center of the scale. Then press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images are properly exposed. The ISO setting affects the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity or you can set it manually. Here's how to set the ISO on the A65. Press the ISO button to bring up the ISO speed options on the camera's LCD monitor. Use the control button or the control dial to select the ISO setting you'd like. In the standard ISO settings options, you can choose from ISOs ranging from 100 to 12,800. It's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. When you increase the ISO speed, a higher number, for low light, a faster shutter speed can be used to avoid blurry images. Keep in mind that a higher ISO setting may introduce noise or grain into your images. An ISO setting that is too high for the shooting conditions will make the image lose quality, and you might even start to see particles in your pictures. To help keep digital noise to a minimum, the Sony A65 has an impressive multi-frame noise reduction ISO option. To choose the ISO setting within multi-frame noise reduction, press the ISO button to view the ISO options. Scroll to the multi-frame noise reduction option and press the right side of the control button. Then use the top and bottom of the control button to select the settings you'd like. When this option is used, the camera will take several shots at very high speed and combine them for a final image with significantly reduced noise. Experiment with ISO settings to become more familiar with their range and control. Here is a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO settings to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade on an overcast day or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. The A65 is equipped with Sony's translucent mirror technology which allows the camera to offer full-time live view with incredible focusing speed and accuracy. Let's take a few moments to learn more about the options that are displayed on the camera's LCD. Note that these settings may vary depending on the shooting mode that you have selected. In the graphic display, which is also the default screen, several important shooting settings are displayed on the bottom of the screen. First, the shutter speed and the aperture are displayed. 
Next, there is the exposure value scale and the ISO setting. Above that, you'll find the aperture indicator and the shutter speed indicator. The aperture and shutter speed indicators provide a visual guide to help you remember which aperture values and shutter speeds will provide specific results. At the top left corner of the screen, the shooting mode will be displayed. Next, you'll see the memory card indicator with the number of shots remaining. Next, the image size, image quality, and movie image size are displayed. At the top right corner of the display, you'll see the battery remaining icon as well as the percentage. To view the display all information screen, simply press the display button. And to minimize the information that is displayed, press the display button again to see the recording information off view. To see the camera's built-in digital level gauge, press the display button again. This display level will indicate whether the camera is level both horizontally and in the forward-backward directions. Your A65 is also capable of shooting high-quality HD video. When you record movies with your A65, you have the same control over the depth of field and overall exposure as you would when you're shooting still images. Also note that you can record movies in any of the camera shooting modes. When you're using a scene mode or picture effect, the characteristics of those settings will be applied to your movie. You can make adjustments to many of the camera settings prior to recording a movie. Here are the specific shooting settings that you can make adjustments to for both still picture taking and movie recording. ISO, white balance, creative style, exposure compensation, autofocus area, metering mode, face detection, object tracking, dynamic range optimizer, lens compensation settings, and picture effect. It's helpful to understand a little about movie resolution and movie file formats before you start shooting movies. There are two different movie recording formats to choose from, AVCHD and MP4. The AVCHD format records movies in full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080. You'll want to choose this format to record the highest resolution movies possible with your camera. AVCHD is an advanced video format ideal for archiving your video and burning to optical discs. You can burn AVCHD to a DVD in the AVCHD format or to a Blu-ray disc, both playable in full HD on a Blu-ray player. The other file format, MP4, is a good format to choose if you're going to be using the movie files for posting online or viewing on your computer. Recording a movie with this camera is easy. Simply press the shutter halfway down to focus, then press the movie record button to begin recording, and press it again to stop recording. To refocus during movie recording, you can press the shutter button halfway down again. When shooting movies, use an SD Speed Class 6 memory card or higher. If a slower memory card is used, the movie may not be properly recorded. To view a movie that you have recorded, press the playback button. Then press the thumbnail zoom out button. Use the left side of the control button to navigate to the left bar and press the center control button. Still image files, AVCHD files, and MP4 files are located in separate folders within the playback view, so you'll need to select the appropriate folder. Here you can scroll to the movie you'd like to play and press the center control button to play the movie on the LCD. There are a few additional things that you should know about recording movies with your A65. If you'd like to have control over the aperture and shutter speed in your movies, you can use the movie mode. In this mode, the camera must be focused manually, so you'll need to switch the autofocus switches on the camera body and the lens to manual focus. Now rotate the mode dial to the movie mode icon. Now you can choose from program auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual mode. Just as in still image shooting, you can use the control dial to make adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed. Adjust the focus with the focus ring on the lens. The autofocus area where the image is in focus will turn green. Now simply press the movie record button to begin recording and press it again to end recording. When the autofocus mode is set to local, you can change the focus area during movie recording. We'll discuss autofocus areas later in this guide. To record sound during movie recording, the A65 has a built-in microphone which will record sound automatically by default. Take care not to cover the microphone during movie recording. If you'd like to turn off sound recording, you can do this through the camera's menu system. 
In the movie shooting menu, navigate to audio recording. Here you can select either on or off. After you've captured images and recorded movies with your Sony a6500, you'll probably want to view them on the camera's large LCD. Let's take a look at the playback options for the a6500. To enter playback, simply press the playback button. The most recently recorded image or movie will be displayed on the LCD. You can use the sides of the control button to scroll through the image or movie files. To view additional files, press the zoom out thumbnail button. Still image files and movies are stored in folders. You can press the left side of the control button to navigate to the bar on the left side of the screen and press the center control button to view the other folder options. You can choose to view the still image files, the MP4 movie files, or the AVCHD movie files. You can use the control button to scroll through the image thumbnails. To view an image full screen on the LCD, press the center control button. You can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. Press the zoom in button to see the desired level of detail in the photo. You can also press the zoom out button once or multiple times to view a large area of the image. Then you can use the top, bottom, and sides of the control button to scroll to the desired area of the photo. As you're scrolling through photos in the camera's playback, you may find some images that you'd like to protect from accidentally being erased. To protect images, enter the camera's first playback menu and choose Protect. Here, choose multiple images. Now, all you need to do is scroll through the photos on the memory card. When you see an image that you'd like to protect, press the center control button to select the image. Then you can continue scrolling through the images to select any others that you'd like to protect. When you're finished, press the menu button to confirm protection. Select OK and the camera will resume normal playback. Now images that have been protected will have a small key icon displayed at the top of the screen. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can delete it from your memory card by pressing the delete button. When the delete dialog appears, select delete and the image will be removed from the memory card. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. Another feature that is available in the camera's image playback is image rotation. To rotate an image, press the function button. Now you can press the center control button to rotate the image. Each time the center control button is pressed, the image will be rotated 90 degrees. Press the function button to resume normal playback. The A65 has different playback screens that will each display different information about the image. Pressing the playback button will take you to the default playback where many important settings are displayed. At the top left corner, you'll see the memory card and the still image folder icon. Next, there is the folder number and file number. This shows the aspect ratio, image size, and quality. On the right top corner, you'll see the battery indicator. At the bottom of the screen, there is the date that the image was recorded, the time the image was recorded, and the file number out of the total number of images. Also at the bottom of the screen are shooting settings that were used to record the image, including the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO setting. Pressing the display button will bring up the histogram display. Here you'll see the same information at the top and the bottom of the screen that was in the previous display. In addition to that information, you can see the shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, exposure compensation, metering mode, focal length, creative style, white balance, and dynamic range optimizer settings. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the histograms for the whole image, the top histogram as well as the histograms for each color channel. The histogram gives a basic idea of the tone distribution of an image. If the histogram is shifted to the left side of the graph, the image will probably be dark or underexposed. If the histogram is shifted to the right side of the graph, the image will be too bright or overexposed. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have data distributed over the whole graph. The final playback screen can be shown by pressing the display button again. This view is simply a full screen image. One of the important principles of taking a great picture is image sharpness. 
Image sharpness is affected by several things, including lens focus, camera shake, depth of field, and digital noise. Let's first take a minute to discuss the A65's unique object tracking focus feature, which will keep focusing on a moving object while tracking it. By default, object tracking is enabled. To use object tracking, press the AF button and a target frame will appear. Align the target frame with the subject to be tracked and press the center control button. Now simply press the shutter button to take the picture. Note that object tracking is especially useful for faces. If the face that is being tracked leaves the screen and then returns, the camera will resume focusing on that face. Before we begin discussing the camera's autofocus modes and areas, let's set the object tracking to off. To do this, simply press the function button and navigate to the object tracking option. Here, rotate the control dial to select off. Now let's discuss the autofocus modes that are available on the A65. Autofocus modes are available only when the AF switches on the camera body and lens are set to the AF position. In the PASM and continuous priority shooting modes, you'll be able to change the camera's focus mode setting. The focus mode will be set automatically for you in the other shooting modes. To access the camera's focus modes, make sure that the shooting mode is set to PASM or continuous priority. Then press the function button. Here you can use the control button to navigate to the autofocus mode options. You can rotate the control dial or press the center control button to make your selection. You can choose from AFS or single shot AF, AFA or automatic AF, and AFC or continuous AF. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing you want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. With all of the focus modes, you can focus by pressing the shutter halfway down or by pressing the AF button. When focus is achieved, the AF point which achieved focus will flash in green and the focus indicator will appear at the bottom left corner of the LCD. The first focus mode is AFS or single shot AF and it's best suited for stationary subjects. Choose this mode when you're photographing objects or when you're doing portrait work of an older child or adult. The AFC or continuous AF mode is best for shooting moving subjects and is for use when the focusing distance keeps changing. Use this mode when you're photographing sporting events, small children, or animals. While you hold down the shutter button halfway, the subject will be focused continuously. In the AFA or automatic AF mode, the focus mode automatically switches from single shot AF to continuous AF if the still subject starts moving. After the subject is focused in the single shot mode, if the subject starts moving, the camera will detect the movement and will change the AF mode automatically to continuous AF. In addition to the camera's autofocus modes, you'll also want to be familiar with the autofocus areas. The autofocus areas can be changed when the camera is set to the PASM or continuous priority or sweep panorama shooting modes. To select an autofocus area, press the function button and navigate to the AF area setting. Rotate the control dial to make your selection. The first option is wide. In this mode, the camera will select which of the 15 AF points to use for focus. Next, there is zone. With this option, you will simply select one of three zones of focus areas, and the camera will automatically select the focus area from that zone. To select the zone, simply use the right and left sides of the control button, and press the center control button to confirm. To change the zone while shooting, simply press the AF button. The next focus area option is Spot. When this option is selected, the camera will exclusively use the center AF point for focus. The last option is Local. With the Local option, you can select the exact focus point you'd like the camera to use. To select a focus point, make sure the autofocus area is set to Local and press the AF button. Now you can choose the AF point with either the control button or the control dial. When you've made your selection, press the shutter button halfway to resume picture taking. Your camera also has a manual focus option that can be used at times when it's difficult to get proper focus using autofocus methods. Let's talk a little about camera shake, which can cause poor focus in your images. Camera shake happens when the camera uses slow shutter speeds and moves while the shutter is open, exposing the image sensor. To avoid camera shake, always try to steady the camera. 
Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a bean bag to steady the camera. In scenarios with stationary subjects, the handheld twilight mode in the camera's scene modes is a great option to minimize the effects of camera shake. You can also reduce the effect of camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length. Confusing? Let me explain. If the focal length of your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to at least 1 300th of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might get by with using a shutter speed as low as 1 30th of a second. Another cause of poor focus is digital grain, which is sometimes called noise. You can avoid noise by not enlarging an image too much. If you know that you must enlarge an image, select as large a file format as possible. If you're using high ISOs, you might try using the camera's multi-frame noise reduction ISO option. You can also keep out noise by photographing subjects that have good contrast. Finally, to reduce digital noise in your images, you can let your camera cool off for a moment before shooting more pictures after heavy use. An overheated image sensor will add noise to your pictures. Let's take a look at the A65's sophisticated menu system. Depending on what shooting mode you're using, different menu items will appear. For our purposes in this guide, we'll be showing the menu options that are available in the camera's manual mode. Many of these settings are discussed in greater detail in other chapters of the guide. We'll just look at an overview of the menu items in this chapter. The menu system is accessed by pressing the menu button. The first menu is the recording menu indicated by the camera icon. It has two sub-menus indicated by the numbers to the right side of the icon. In the first recording menu, the first item is image size followed by image aspect ratio. You can change the aspect ratio to either 3.2 or 16.9. If you're planning on making standard 4x6 prints of your images, you'll want to keep the aspect ratio at 3.2. Next, there is the image quality setting followed by the panorama size and direction options for both the sweep panorama and the 3D sweep panorama modes. The second recording menu begins with the long exposure noise reduction, which determines the noise reduction for shots with very slow shutter speeds. Next, there is the high ISO noise reduction, which will determine the level of noise reduction for images shot with high ISO settings. The next menu item is flash control, here you can choose the method for determining the intensity of the flash output. The ADI flash option provides accurate flash compensation with virtually no effect from the reflection off the subject. The pre-flash TTL method uses data from pre-flash metering to determine the amount of light to output. The next menu item is AF Illuminator, which can be set to auto or off. When it's set to auto, the AF Illuminator will provide light for dimly lit subjects to aid focusing. Next, there is the color space setting with two options, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Some photographers prefer the sRGB mode as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode as this mode has a wider range of colors, making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. The next menu item is the Steady Shot option. Sony Steady Shot can reduce the effect of camera shake in images with slow shutter speeds. The last menu item is the Shooting Tip List, which contains many helpful tips for using the camera in a variety of shooting scenarios. The next menu is the Movie Shooting menu, which begins with the Movie File Format option. You can choose from the AVCHD or MP4. The record setting is where you can select the size of the recorded movie frame. Depending on whether you have selected AVCHD or MP4, the record setting options will vary. The next menu item is audio recording, where you can choose whether or not to have your camera's microphone record sound. The wind noise reduction option will reduce wind noise during movie recording. And the steady shot option will allow you to set the steady shot to on or off. Now let's take a look at the custom menu, which includes four sub-menus. 
The first item in the first menu is the iStart AF, which sets whether or not to use the autofocus when you look through the viewfinder. Next, there is the Finder LCD setting, which determines the method for switching between the viewfinder and LCD. When enabled, the red eye reduction feature will reduce the appearance of red eyes in images of people or animals when the flash is used. The release without lens option sets whether the shutter can open without a lens attached. The last two menu items, Auto Plus Continuous Shooting and Auto Plus Image Extract, will allow you to choose whether or not the camera will shoot continuously in Auto Plus mode and whether or not to save all of the images that were taken in the Auto Plus continuous shooting. The second custom menu begins with the grid line setting, which allows you to select the type of composition grid that can be displayed over the image while shooting. You can choose from rule of thirds, square, or diagonal plus square. You can also choose to have the grid disabled. The auto review settings allows you to choose how long you'd like images to be automatically displayed on the LCD after being taken. The next two menu items, Display Button Monitor and Display Button Finder, allow you to choose what information is visible on both the LCD monitor and in the electronic viewfinder. The peaking level setting will enhance the outline of in-focus ranges with a specific color. You can choose from high, mid, low, or off. The peaking color sets the color that will be used for the peaking function. The live view display option sets whether or not to display the effect of a function on the screen, such as the effect of exposure compensation. The third custom menu begins with the AEL button setting, which determines how the AE lock button will lock the exposure during shooting. Next, there is the ISO button option, which will allow you to choose the function of the ISO button. The next three menu items, Preview Button, Focus Hold Button, and Smart Teleconverter Button, allow you to select the functions for these buttons. The fourth custom menu begins with lens compensation options for shading, chromatic aberration, and distortion. These menu items will allow you to choose to have the correction for these items set to either Auto or Off. The front curtain shutter menu item allows you to set whether or not to use the electronic front curtain shutter function. The face registration option allows you to register or change a person's face that will be priority in focus. Now let's look at the playback menus. The first menu is delete, which allows you to delete multiple images at once or all images in a specific folder. The view mode option allows you to choose how to group the images for playback. The slideshow option will play a slideshow of the images on the memory card. The image index option will allow you to choose whether you'd like to view four or nine image thumbnails. The 3D viewing option is available only with images taken using the camera's 3D shooting mode with a compatible 3D television that's connected to the camera. The protect menu item allows you to protect images from accidental deletion and the Specify Printing option allows you to choose the way that images are printed when the camera is connected to a compatible printer. The second playback menu begins with the Volume Settings menu option, which allows you to choose the volume setting for movie playback. The Playback Display option determines whether vertical images will be rotated on the LCD during playback. Now let's look at the Memory Card Tool menu. The first menu item allows you to format the memory card. Next, you can choose the way that the camera assigns file numbers to the image and movie files. The folder name will allow you to choose the folder format and the select recording folder allows you to change the folder where recorded images are stored on the memory card. With the new folder option, you can create a new folder to store images and movies on the memory card. The Recover Image DB setting will recover the image database file from movies and still images to enable recording and playback. The last menu item in the Memory Card Tool menu is the Display Card Space setting. This option shows you how many images and how many minutes of movie can be recorded with the current settings and the space available on the memory card. The Clock Setup menu is next. There are two menu items here, Date Time Setup and Area Setting. To set the date and time, press the center control button and use the top and bottom of the control button to adjust settings. Use the sides of the control button to navigate between each section 
and press the center control button to confirm the settings. The area setting will allow you to choose the time zone. The final menu is the setup menu with three sub-menus. The first item, menu start, determines which menu item will be displayed, whether it is the top menu item or the menu item that was previously selected. The next two menu items allow you to choose the brightness for both the LCD and the viewfinder. The GPS settings allow you to set the GPS functions for the built-in GPS feature. The power save option determines how long the camera should wait before going into power save mode. HDMI resolution sets the resolution when the camera is connected to an HDTV. Control for HDMI will allow you to operate the camera from a TV using an HDMI cable. The second setup menu begins with the USB connection setting, which determines how a computer will recognize the camera when it's connected with a USB cable. Next is the audio signals setting, which determines whether or not the beep sound is used when focus is achieved or when the self-timer is working. The cleaning mode will allow you to clean the image sensor. The third setup menu begins with the version menu item, which will display which version of camera software is installed. Language allows you to choose the language that is used for the menus and other settings. The mode dial guide option will enable or disable the mode dial guide, which provides an explanation of each shooting mode. Demo mode can be used to set the demonstration of movie playback to on or off, and the initialize menu item will restore the camera settings to factory default. Let's discuss white balance. It's important to understand that the quality of your pictures is affected by the color of the surrounding light and how the camera's electronics process that light. Compensating for varying light conditions is referred to as setting the white balance. Most light looks white to an untrained eye, but it can be composed of a range of different colors. The color of sunlight is different in daylight, in the shade, or in cloudy conditions. Daylight, for example, is fairly blue, and fluorescent light is fairly green. If your camera is set to shoot in daylight, but you're shooting in a setting with fluorescent light, your image will look overly red. Proper camera white balance takes into account the color temperature of a light source, which refers to the relative warmth or coolness of white light. Human eyes are very good at judging what is white under different light sources. However, digital cameras often have great difficulty determining auto white balance, or AWB. Incorrect white balance can create unattractive blue, orange, or even green colors in your photos. The white balance scale is expressed in measurements of Kelvin. The higher color temperatures measured in the area of 5600 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin represent situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of blue tones and a lesser amount of red tones. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3200 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce a greater amount of red tones and a lesser amount of blue tones. Once you get acquainted with the camera's preset white balance settings, you can try setting your own by using the camera's custom white balance feature. To use this tool effectively, you'll want to be familiar with the color temperature that is most effective for your shooting situation. Again, most light looks white to an untrained eye. Setting your white balance will help your pictures have a proper coloring. If natural looking colors cannot be obtained with auto white balance, you can set the white balance manually to suit the respective light source. In the automatic modes, the white balance will be set automatically. To access the white balance settings, press the white balance button, the right side of the control button. Here, you choose which white balance setting will be best for your shooting scenario. A benefit of the A65 is that it allows for fine tuning of white balance within each white balance setting. Your camera will attempt to automatically determine the white balance when it's set to the auto white balance mode. This is the default setting, but you can get better results by setting a preset white balance or by manually customizing the white balance. The next white balance setting is daylight. Daylight is great for shooting pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. 
Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. This setting is marked by an icon of a house with shade. Use the cloudy setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. This is marked with a cloud icon. The incandescent setting is used when taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The A65 has four different fluorescent light settings that can be used when shooting under different colors of fluorescent lighting that are common today. The next setting is the flash setting. Use this setting when using the built-in or an external flash unit. The color temperature setting will allow you to select the specific color temperature of the light that you're shooting under. The next icon is the custom white balance option. Select this option when you want to use your own custom white balance. The last icon is the custom white balance setup option, which is used to create the custom white balance setting specific to the lighting conditions that you're shooting in. This is done by taking a picture of a white card or object and then selecting the image for the camera's electronics to reference. An 18% gray card, which can be purchased at your local camera store, will give you the most accurate results. You can also use a white card, an object like a shirt, or a piece of paper to achieve similar results. Press the white balance button, navigate to the custom white balance setup option, and press the center control button. Make sure the white or gray object fills the small circle at the center of the frame, and press the shutter button to take the white balance reading. The camera will display the color temperature reading. Press the center control button to resume picture taking. In addition to white balance, there are three other features on your A65 that can improve the quality of your images. Creative styles, picture effects, and dynamic range optimization. Creative styles are an intuitive way for you to tell the camera what levels of sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color you would like for your specific shooting scenario. The camera has six different preset creative styles and you can make adjustments to settings in each of them. To access the creative styles, press the function button and use the control button to navigate to the creative style option. Press the center control button to view the settings. First, there is the standard creative style. This is a good general use picture style. The camera will automatically adjust color tone to fit the scene you're photographing. Images taken with this creative style will appear sharp, vivid, and crisp. The vivid creative style will record images with great saturation and sharpening. Use this creative style for striking images of flowers, scenery, and ocean views. The portrait picture style is great for portraits, particularly close-ups. It offers pleasant skin tones and it makes the image appear a little softer. The landscape picture style is good for taking pictures of scenery outdoors. This picture style makes the greens and blues in the image more vivid. The sunset creative style beautifully captures the red tones of the setting sun. The black and white creative style will capture images with smooth black and white gradation. Images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. All of these creative styles are fully customizable. You can make changes to the contrast, saturation, and sharpness. We'll select one that we'd like to edit and simply press the right side of the control button to view the options. To adjust one of the parameters, use the control button to scroll to that setting. Then press the top or bottom of the control button to make the adjustments. When you're finished, press the center control button to resume picture taking. In addition to the creative styles, your Sony A65 has picture effects, which are a great way to add creativity to your images. The picture effects can be accessed by pressing the bottom of the control button. Let's take a look at each of the picture effects now. The toy camera picture effect will mimic the look of a toy camera photo with shaded corners and pronounced colors. The pop color picture effect will create a vivid look that emphasizes the colors in the image. The posterization effect will give your images a high contrast abstract look by emphasizing either the primary colors or black and white tones, depending on the setting that you select. Retro photo will make your image look aged with sepia color tones and faded contrast. The soft high key picture effect will create the look of an old photo with soft colors and reduced contrast. 
There are also four different partial color picture effects for red, green, blue, and yellow. These picture effects create images that retain the respective color of that effect, but the other colors in the image are converted to black and white. High contrast monochrome will create high contrast black and white images. The soft focus picture effect will create images with a soft lighting effect. You can set the intensity of the effect to mid, high, or low. The HDR painting will take three high-speed shots and combine them to create the look of a painting with enhanced colors and details. Again, you can choose from three levels of intensity. The rich tone monochrome effect will take three high-speed shots and combine them to create black and white images with rich gradation and details. The miniature effect will enhance the subject and considerably blur the background. This effect is best used from above. You can use the sides of the control button to select the area of the frame that you would like to be in focus. Keep in mind that many of the picture effects will work for both still image capture and movie recording. As you're out taking pictures, you'll probably run into some challenging lighting situations, such as when your subject is backlit, causing a wide range of shadow to highlight. Your A65 has two great features that will help you retain amazing shadow and highlight details, even in backlight or high contrast lighting. Auto HDR and DRO, or Dynamic Range Optimizer. Let's take a minute to learn about both of these camera features, starting with Auto HDR. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique that is used in photography to create captivating photos of dramatically lit subjects. The HDR effect is created when three differently exposed images are combined to create a single photo that shows a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. Here is how to configure the camera to use the Auto HDR setting. First, make sure that the shooting mode is set to P, A, S, or M. Also note that the ISO setting cannot be set to the multi-frame noise reduction option. Now press the function button and navigate to the DRO Auto HDR setting. Here use the control button to select Auto HDR. Press the sides of the control button to adjust the level of variation you'd like in the exposure between the shots that will be used to create the HDR image. Now simply take the picture. The camera will take three shots, and after the images are combined, two images will be recorded to the camera's memory card, the image with the correct exposure, and the final HDR image. Now let's talk about the Dynamic Range Optimizer, or DRO. This setting is similar to the Auto HDR, as it helps to capture rich, natural shadow and highlight details in high contrast lighting, but it differs from Auto HDR in that it captures just one image so it can be used with moving subjects and can even be used with continuous shooting. The DRO setting is available when the camera's shoot mode is set to PASM or telezoom modes, and it's accessed under the same function options as Auto HDR. Again, just press the function button, then scroll to the DRO Auto HDR option, select the DRO Auto option, here you can use the sides of the control button to adjust the level of optimization you'd like. The higher the number, the more shadows and highlights will be recovered in an image. Now simply take the picture. Your A65 has a powerful built-in flash that can provide you with extra light in certain shooting scenarios. The effective range of the built-in flash is between 3 and 30 feet, depending on the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. To use the built-in flash in the P, A, S, and M modes, simply press the flash button and the flash will pop up. In the automatic and scene modes, the built-in flash will pop up and fire automatically in low light or backlight conditions. Note that the flash will not fire in some shooting modes and that some flash modes are available only in certain shooting modes. To access the flash modes, press the function button and use the control button to navigate to the flash options. Here you can use the control dial to scroll through the flash mode options and select the one you'd like. There are five different flash modes. Let's talk about each of them now. First, there is the flash off mode. When this mode is selected, the flash will not fire, even if the flash is raised. Use the flash off mode when you do not want the flash to fire, regardless of the lighting. 
The next flash mode is the auto flash mode. With this mode, the camera will automatically evaluate the lighting conditions and fire to provide the correct amount of light. The fill flash mode will fire every time a picture is taken, regardless of lighting. Use this for situations where there is plenty of light, but you'd like the subject to be lit with the flash. Next is the slow sync flash mode. This is a good mode to use when you're photographing a subject at night and you'd like both the background and the subject to be properly exposed. The rear sync flash mode will fire the flash just before the shutter closes, creating a trailing image of the movement of the subject. The last flash mode is wireless, which is used to fire an optional external flash unit. If the image is too bright or too dark, you can use flash exposure compensation to make adjustments. To set the flash exposure compensation, press the function button and navigate to flash compensation. Use the control dial to adjust the level of flash compensation you'd like. Numbers with plus signs will increase the level of the flash and the numbers with minus signs will decrease the level of the flash. Now simply take the picture. To review, let's go through some examples of these situations to manually apply the principles learned in this guide. First, let's approach a portrait situation. It's always smart to first preset the white balance to match the current lighting. Use the preset or custom white balance. To make the subject the focal point, position the subject in the frame in a way that will draw more attention to the subject. You can achieve this by using the rule of thirds. Make sure the focus point is correct. Another great way to give focus to the subject is by blurring the background. This effect is achieved by opening the aperture. Remember, the smaller the F number, the larger the aperture opening. After the aperture is set, adjust the shutter speed to achieve a proper exposure. By opening the aperture more, you create a shallow depth of field. This will allow your focus point to be in sharp focus while the background will have a soft focus. The next common situation is a landscape. You'll usually want the whole landscape to be in sharp focus. To achieve this, the aperture will need to be set for a very narrow opening. Remember, the larger the F number, the smaller the depth of field. A small opening creates a very long depth of field. This mode will give you a sharp focus in both the foreground and the background. Then adjust the shutter speed to achieve a proper exposure. In this setting, the shutter speed can get pretty slow, so be sure to steady your camera or use a tripod to avoid camera shake. When taking pictures at sporting events or shooting subjects with a lot of motion, it's a good idea to prepare your camera before the action begins. First, you'll need to choose the shooting mode. With the A65, you could choose continuous advanced priority, shutter priority, or manual mode. First, preset your white balance. Next, set the focus mode to continuous so that the camera will be constantly focusing on the moving subject. Now, if applicable, Set your camera's drive mode to continuous so when the action happens, you only need to hold the button down. Now position yourself to have the best angle for the action. If you want your subject to be in sharp focus, turn your ISO up around 400 to 1600. Next, adjust your shutter speed to 1 500th of a second or faster. Then adjust your aperture for a proper exposure. Take a couple of practice shots to fine tune. Now you're ready for action. If you want to show a little blur to add aesthetic effect, slightly slow the shutter speed. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Sony Alpha 65. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics you want to review from the main menu or table of contents. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.